When designing a wing, the goal isn't just high lift and low drag. The way it stalls is just as important. That's why airfoils are grouped into three main categories based on stall behavior. I'm an aerospace engineer and the first is trailing edge stall. The airflow begins to separate at the trailing edge and moves forward as the angle of attack increases. The loss of lift is gradual and the airfoil pitches down gradually as well. For these reasons, this stall behavior is desirable. The second is leading edge stall. Here, flow separates over the leading edge at low angles of attack but reattaches, forming a bubble. So the effect at first is small. Then, at some higher angle, the flow does not reattach and the airfoil stalls almost immediately, causing a sharp drop in lift and a violent pitch down. The third is thin airfoil stall. Here, the stall also starts at the leading edge and reattaches further back. As the angle of attack increases, the bubble stretches toward the trailing edge. Beyond a certain point, the flow separates over the entire airfoil. The lift loss is gradual, but the pitch down changes are larger. That's why airfoil selection isn't just about picking the ones with the highest lift coefficient, but about choosing the ones that fits the wing's many conflicting design requirements.